So the IRS is calling the stimulus payments economic impact payments. So it's not really stimulus payments for them, but what they're saying is that who actually um, is going to receive the, the, the economic impact payment, and it depends on you as a taxpayer. So if you're single, your eligible amount that you can make up to is 75000 the ineligible amount, if you make over 99000 as a single taxpayer, then you will be ineligible to receive that economic impact payment. You also have the head of household and married filing jointly. And again, it just depends on your income. You, for head of household, you can make up to 112500 And for married filing jointly, 150000 And if you go over that amount, then the economic impact payment starts to reduce. So who's eligible to receive these payments? Anyone who filed their income tax return in 2018 or 2019. Also individual who received social security, disability, veterans and, and railroad benefits. Taxpayers who normally do not file a tax return, and we'll talk a little bit more about those um, individuals, they will be able to receive these payments. However, you can't be a dependent of another taxpayer, which means that if you have an adult child and that child was on your tax return, then that child will not be eligible to receive the payment. And then of course, if you need, everyone needs a social security number, if you do not have one, then you will not be eligible. And then how much do you get? Individuals will receive 1,200, married couples will receive 2,400. And if the income is above those eligible amounts that I mentioned before, your payment is reduced by $5 for each 100. And the example that I have here is that if your income is 75,100, for example, Instead of that $1,200, you'll get $1,195. So what do you need to do to receive those payments? No action is required if you file a 2018 or 2019 tax return. The IRS already has your information, so you do not need to do anything. If you're receiving Social Security, again, you do not need to do anything. The Social Security, um, office, they have your bank information, so the IRS will receive it from them. Other categories where people will automatically receive the economic impact payments is anyone who's on disability, anyone who's on SSI, SSDI, or anyone for veteran benefits. There's people, as I mentioned before, who, who are eligible to receive uh, economic impact payments, but they've never filed a tax return because they um, could be receiving cash assistance or were unemployed previously and they just didn't have to file. So for those individuals, they're still eligible to receive that economic impact payment. So the IRS, what they did is they created a, a tool for these individuals, it's called non-filers tool, and you would need to enter into the IRS website, into that tool, information such as your name, your address, email, address, your social security number, bank information. So they, you, you have to enter a number of different um, information to verify you are who you are, and plus you will put your dependent information. And then the IRS will send non-filers information, of, um, I'm sorry, they will send them the economic income payment. So even people who don't normally file tax returns are now eligible to receive these payments. And then the IRS, what they have decided to do is that after you receive the payment, approximately 15 days later, you get something in the mail saying, we sent you this payment. So for those people who say, I never got it, but the IRS is saying, yeah, we sent it to you, then this is proof that they did send you a payment. And again, this letter will state that your payment arrived and the method. So if they did direct deposit or if they sent you a check, the, the, 
this letter will give you specifics. And then the IRS currently, because we end this pandemic, they are, if you owe the IRS at this point, they are suspending all payments between April 1st and July 15th. So um, what you can do is you can, of course, continue to pay them, but you don't need to if you don't have the money, if you lost your job or any, any of those serious issues, the I, interest will continue to accrue on the amounts owed to the IRS. So just want to let you know your amount is still going to continue to grow, but you're not required to, to make payments. And then if the IRS has sent you any letters or any information, remember the IRS never calls you. They don't send emails. They don't text. Um, they usually send letters and they are like notices and they want specific information. So usually they have a number on the letter and they said that if you receive a letter, what you can do is contact them and there's a number usually on any of these letters or correspondence that they sent out and you can contact them and say, you know, what is the situation? Can you explain that? Have answer any questions, ask any questions that you have and um, they will be able to answer it. Plus you want to know, can you delay whatever situation this is until July 15th? Because right now the IRS are not in their offices and they are processing um, IRS payments or IRS um, refunds and they of course send, send, sending out the economic impact payments but they are usually doing this from home or limited staff in the office. So I have a poll that I'm going to launch so if you can fill out the poll for me. All right, I'm gonna wait a few minutes. Okay, thank you. And what I'm seeing is that most people have received this stimulus payment. So that's great, that's awesome. Um, so student loans, that's something else that has changed now with the pandemic and what um, the government is saying about student, federal student loans. So remember, sometimes if you have student loans, you can have private student loans, you can have federal student loans, and you can also have student loans from like a state, from the state of Florida, or, you know, the Education Department of Florida in Tallahassee. So these are just federal student loans. What's happening with them is that you will automatically be placed in a forbearance state. And that will last until September 30th. So what that means is that you don't need to make any payments on your student loans until September 30th or October 1st, the month of October. You can still make payments, of course, if you choose to do so, but if you do not want to do so, then you will not be penalized. I do want you to know that the interest is being set to zero. So that's awesome. That's a great thing. And these, again, it's just on federal student loans. I, I give you some of the different federal student loans that's in here. And of course, if they are private or by individual schools or states, then they may not qualify for this 0% interest. And so what that means during this time is that if you make any payments to your student loans, what happens is the full amount will be applied to the principal which is awesome. So it, it, in previous times, because the interest is accumulated daily on your student loans, is that if you owe $1,000 and you paid you know, $100, the $100 would not go to principal. You might get $20 that goes to principal and 80 that goes to interest. But now, since, you, since there's zero interest, any payment you make on your student loans, what's happening is that it's going to go straight to principal. So that $100 that you now 
was paying for your student loans, the hundred dollars will go to to the principal directly to the principal. And what that means for you is that if you can afford it, that lowers your um, student loans um, instead of you paying that that extra interest. And then the other thing that this talks about is that wage garnishments will be suspended. So if the um, student loans were taking money out of your paycheck, and again, this is federal student loans, they have suspended that. And if you receive a refund, they will not um, withheld any money from your refund to pay student loans, even if you're in default. So again, this lasts until September 30th at this time. Priorities and budgeting. So I have another poll that I'm going to launch about priorities. So tell me what your priorities are with your stimulus payment. Okay, we're going to wait a few minutes and let everyone answer the poll. Okay, thank you. And everyone answered differently. But what I want to mention in terms of priorities is make sure you have some. Make sure you decide what your priorities are with that economic payment. Um, Rent is always a priority. Um, food, utilities, paying your car payment or your car insurance. You want to be able to have transportation. You need to get around. So those definitely you want to make as a priority, especially if you lost your job during this time or you haven't, or you've been furloughed. You want to make sure that you can pay your rent and and get food and, and utilities. Now remember, every one of these. Um, expenses for the most part is there's people out there to help you. So example, if you need help with food, so there's pantries that's now open that you can receive information about that to help you with food. And um, we have that information. There's also um, utility assistance that you can contact OUC and they can help you with some um, help with utilities and they at this point saying they won't suspend any um, utility service for lack of payment. So again, reach out to your lender. The same with car payments. If you owe your car payment this month, month of April and you haven't been able to pay it, reach out to your lender and ask them, you know, what are my options? A lot of times they talk about deferment and Deferment could sometimes be good, but you want to read the fine print. And what does the deferment mean? How does that affect you? Um, so again, car payment and deferment, just make sure you talk to them and see what that means for you. You don't want a deferment where in two, three or four months, you defer your payments. And then once, once that time period is over, then you have to pay all of that amount at one time. And then not priorities, you have to determine that for yourself. Um, but some of the, the, the items on your budget that may not be priorities are cable, you know, doing without cable at this time. Um, student loans, I just explained to you that you can, um, they automatically on deferment. So if you don't have the money to pay them, then at this point, again, this is federal, you you can defer them. And then budgeting, using a budget. So you should have a budget for that economic impact payment. So whatever amount you got, let's say you got $1,500. So let's do a budget for that and say, okay, I have $1,500. What's the best use of this money? What should I do with this? If you want to um, pay your rent, okay, we're going to use some of it for rent. Are you going to pay you some of it for food? Or are we going to use the pantry? Are we going to use some of it for a car payment? Or are we going to speak to our lender and try to um, get some a deferment where a deferment in terms of I'm paying maybe 
50 or 60 dollars every month extra once i get back on my feet in 90 to 120 days so again a budget could be uh, a budget for the economic impact payment as well and then you need a budget for when you're not working absolutely because now I have limited income, whether that income is coming from unemployment or that income is coming from the stimulus um, payment or whether that income is coming from my savings, I need to really prioritize and say, what am I gonna pay? I, I might be out of work for not just this month, but next month, maybe even June. So I need to be able to prioritize and say, what's my, what 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 do I need to pay? What what do I not want to um, go away? So I need to know what my income is for these next couple of months. And I give you some free budgeting apps here on this on this um, on on here on the PowerPoint, so you can go ahead and look. And all of them are good. And they do different things, and they they do it differently. And a budgeting app, if you love apps, this is a good idea to use. If you're not a big app person, you can do a budget with pen and paper. You can do a budget with Excel. I mean, there's so many different ways to have a budget. There's no one right way to utilize a budget. There, you know, and if you use Excel, Excel even has built-in budgets that you can um, um, utilize from Microsoft that you just plug in numbers. So again, there's so many things you can do with budgets and so many ways to use them, but a budget definitely allows you to have more money. I know a lot of that sounds contradictory, but it truly is the case because you now are in control of your money. You're telling your money where you want it to go. And that's exactly where we want to be. We want to be in control of our money and we want to have the the ability to continue to be able to um, spend and also to save. Another, that's another priority. If you're able to save some of that money, this is a great time to do that. Saving is, should be one of your priorities with this payment. If you can, save as much as you can so that maybe next month you might need it to help um, with your rent or help with your car payment. So again, making sure that you save whatever you can from, from the money that you received. And then car insurance. And actually, I just received my car insurance bill today. And the thing I wanted to tell you about this is that a lot of car insurance have, are contacting you about giving a discount to their customers. So, you know, this, um, I know my car insurance contact me, they send me an email and they say, you know, we're going to give you a discount. And so, like I said, I got my bill in today and they did give me a, a oh, sorry. They did give me a discount on my insurance. So, which was great. So again, um, and if, they, if you have a car insurance and they haven't given you a discount, hold on, find out, um, you know, just ask them i've i've heard in the news that the car insurance a lot of car insurance companies are giving out discounts because of the um COVID 19 and most people are not driving so are there any discounts i can qualify for or what have you so if that's if if that works for you then that'd be great but you know where where would it what what would be the downside of that i mean you can get that get that um discount by talking by by accident a lot of times we don't ask our lenders for items and so they definitely are not going to provide it automatically a lot of times so again contact your insurance companies and if you can reduce your insurance at this time that might help you get through this 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 time period and car insurance will also defer your payments but again you want to read the fine print and you want to know what the firm it means to them because everyone has the option to defer 
but they can say in terms of their company how they're going to defer it, how you are required to pay that money back. So again, you want to look at how that requirement is happening. And then the Financial Wellbeing Center, we're here to help you. We want to make sure that we can assist you during this crisis. So I have a poll that I'm going to put out. This is my last poll. Um, and so this one asks about being furloughed or have you lost your job during this time? And so we are waiting for the responses from everyone. Okay, waiting a couple more minutes. So again, if you have lost your job, some of you have said you have lost your job. Remember, we do career counseling. We help with employment resources. So we can help you find a, 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 a job, whether it be a temporary job, if that's what you're looking for, or permanent, or if you want to change careers, we also help with that. So there's a number of different things that we can do to help you during this time. Um, of course, I am open to doing financial counseling, financial uh, workshops and webinars. We're going to continue to do these different kind of webinars on different topics. If you have an idea of a future webinar, we'd love to hear that. 